Um, hey, everybody, welcome back to Embed Live. We're going to get started here. And as you can see, we have a group with us today. We have the unstoppable Christine Burr, who is joining us again. Um, and you will have seen her already on Embed Live as well as our Women at Embed series. Um, today, I'm really excited because we are going to be talking about FEC International. And it is an important initiative that was started at the beginning of this pandemic. And it was started by the people that are on this um, on this Embed Live episode, who are all members of the IAPA FEC board or committee. So, you know what, I'm gonna hand over to you, Christine, and Brandon, and Nick, if you would like to introduce yourselves as well, and then just go ahead and take it away. Sure, I'll, I'll just start, just uh, Christine Buer again, um, the chair of the FEC committee for IAPA. Um, it's been a really cool role I've been enjoying for the past year and a half. Um, and then um, I have some other board members that are with us today um, to talk a little bit about our FEC international Slack channels. So I'll just quickly introduce them. Um, we have Brandon Wiley from um, uh, Hound, um, and then Nick DiMatteo from um, Dave & Buster's. Welcome, hello. Hi. Thank you so much for doing this. So, oh. so tell us about how all of this came together. Sure. You know, um, we um, luckily, actually, our, our committee was able to meet earlier this year and uh, we were putting the objectives and goals together for what we felt we wanted to accomplish as a committee this year. And one of the things that really stood out is we didn't really feel that we had a community um, or a space or a place where we could connect people um, where they could just chat freely about some of the things that they were doing or some of the help that they required. Um, and so we put that as one of our objectives on um, what we wanted to accomplish this year. And I can't remember if it was Brandon or Nick. Um, one of them said, hey, why don't we build out this Slack channel? And it just kind of started from there. And when the COVID crisis hit, we thought, you know, isn't this the perfect opportunity to launch something like that when people need it the most and just see what we can build here and see how we can grow this? Well, I mean, I think, Nick, you, while we were, we may have been meeting, like while we were actually on the call together or whatever, you went and created the Slack channel right away. And so, I mean, it just, it, it kind of kickstarted and happened, you know, within probably within minutes of coming up with the idea and realizing that uh, it's something we, re we needed to do. And so Nick executed and we just began um, meeting together and, and planning out how to roll it out and, and get in front of people. One thing to take a step back and kind of lead into it is all three of us have uh, exposure with Slack. So all three of us are in communities or groups or whatever, and we all have experience with it. So we're just kind of around the table talking and how do we kind of unite a bunch of people from around the world at the same time to communicate in a way that's totally free and lightning fast. And it was, it was, I think it was one of those things where you could see like three light bulbs going off at the same time. And I think that's how it really started to come together. Yeah. And I think one of the benefits just Slack as a platform, um, you know, there, there are other groups, there's Facebook groups out there and there are places for, uh, you know, FEC owners or operators and people in the industry to share uh, insights and, and feedback, but Slack allows, conversations that happen in different in different channels and different streams it allows for direct messages so now you know we have i think almost 300 members that have, have joined and signed up for the slack group and you know we expect that to continue to climb and grow over over time it really has begun to accelerate um, but now everybody has access to each other one on one uh, right. so if if i hear or if i see something in a certain slack channel that i want to dig into and, and have a little bit more information i can go and set up a small little communication group and have like you know one on one or two on you know, you know, three of us talking in, in a separate conversation. And, and so just an opportunity to connect and collaborate together, uh, I think is, the, is, is a really big use case for using Slack as a medium. Yeah. yeah. And, and one of the things we were trying to be mindful of right from the get-go is making sure that we were kind of organizing the conversation in ways that made sense. So we started off slowly just with, you know, kind of like a needs and leads channel, um, a few other little channels, like a general share channel and stuff like that. And then we asked our members as well, hey, suggest if you if there's a channel that's of interest, you suggest it to us and then we'll uh, kind of determine if it's something that the whole community would benefit from. So one of those channels we created right off the get-go was um, the suppliers and manufacturers channel. So they have a place to communicate and talk uh, where the other members aren't included um, and then um, I created a Canadian conversation channel so we can just get Canadian members together because we just have needs that are a little bit different than American members you know and our government acts differently so um, it's worked out really really well and um, we've had some really great suggestions on some other channels that we're looking at creating in the future. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just to, to that point, a reopening channel, for example. Yeah. So we have a COVID-19 specific channel where we can talk about some of the issues that we're dealing with you know, regarding that. Um, but then we want to start shifting the conversation as we get nearer to reopening. How can we begin to prepare for that? And so having a channel where that communication and, and collaboration and ideas can flow uh, will be important. I think it's going well. Um, people are signing up. Uh, people are interacting with each other. About 40% of all of our messaging is direct messaging. So just like Brandon touched on, uh, people are just reaching out to each other to have conversation, either in small groups or one-on-one. -on -one. And, and that's what it's really supposed to be. So it, it's great to see that. Yeah, and, and I would just say, as, as it begins to expand, as more people come in, just the, the level of engagement does increase. And, um, you know, I think one of the things we, we don't necessarily know is, you know, when somebody shares something, how much, how, how much of that is being consumed by others in the channel and, and shared internally inside their own companies and everything else. And so if we can just be a shared resource that, yeah, maybe I don't contribute necessarily directly by adding things, you know, on a regular basis, but I'm there and I'm able to glean new ideas and other information from those who are sharing and then taking that back to, you know, my team or, or my local community, then that's a huge benefit as well. And we see that happening. And, and so that's, um, you know, exciting. Absolutely. How was the happy hour on a lighter note? It, it was pretty terrific, actually. Something that happened that was really cool that I, or that I thought was really cool is that on our happy hour, we had someone from the insurance industry. And so many people had so many questions about it. It was so valuable. So they got this, we got this one-on-one -on -one time with um, somebody from the insurance industry and everybody got to answer uh, their, or get their questions asked and answered. Oh, that's cool. While you're having a happy hour. Again, mm -hmm. I, it's, it's so interesting because it's so new, Sarah. So we yeah. haven't really had a lot of time to get that feedback yet. Um, but I can speak personally uh, from my own experiences. I've had a couple conversations um, where I needed some advice from people and I had never been able to connect with them before. And I was able to through Slack, which was amazing. Um, and I even met some people in my area. This is almost embarrassing to admit that I didn't know through this channel and now I'm connected with them. So I suspect that I'm not the only one that's had these experiences. Other people have. We just haven't been able to uh, extrapolate that out of the group yet and understand that's happening pretty amazing so there's a couple different people that are that have really significant roles in other organizations that have shared information that people have taken and actually ran with it whether that's mm -hmm. been um, the restaurant association where they're able to give grants for people who are in need or whether it's been with other manufacturers are doing in China uh, it's just great to have those people share and then have other people take that information and actually just have it available and practically apply it. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and I'd say not, not just bringing the industry together, but having a, a global outlook. This is, this is something that affects everyone across the entire world, which is one of the key drivers behind the name. You know, we, we contemplated a number of different names and we wanted to make sure that this was an international community that we were bringing together. And yes, maybe we'll end up creating different channels for different countries because there are certain, certainly different challenges that are unique to different countries and even different provinces or states within those countries um, and regions. But, um, but we also recognize that we're all a part of the same group dealing with many of the same issues that we want to be able to bring that community together Together, uh, you know, as a whole. I would just say that it's important that um, not only do we come together in points of crisis uh, where, where you know, we're dealing, we want to share information around COVID-19, but it's important to continue and maintain this, this connectivity and collaboration even as we come out of this. And, and let's say fast forward three years from now, I hope that this is a community that's thousands and thousands strong and that, that we're able to share and continue to share resources and look at each other as a community that collaborates versus a community that, um, that, that kind of goes back and separates and puts their head in the sand or does their own thing again. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, just to add to that a little bit is I think that our community is already so great at sharing, but mm -hmm. we just never have the tool to do that or the resource to yeah. do that. And I think that we're just going to save ourselves so much time and agony because if I have a problem and I reach out to this community, they'll support me and tell me what they've done. So I won't have to solve it on my own. I will have the help of everybody around me to solve it. And I think that's going to help us strengthen our, um, uh, the FEC community worldwide. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. And for me, uh, as you can see, the let's see if I can do it there. The poster behind me, it's a leadership poster, right? So one of those um, cheesy motivational things, but I, I love it so much. It, it's actually, it has my favorite quote on there, and I think it's very fitting for what we're going through as, as just a, a race of people right now. It's by uh, Dr. Martin Luther King, and it says, The ultimate measure of a leader is not where they stand in times of, of comfort and convenience, but where they stand in times of challenge and controversy. 
And I think, you know, for the people that are leaders within our community and, and without out, outside of our industry, have a responsibility to step up and try to do as much as they can to try to help us get through this. Fantastic. And bravo. So for anyone who's watching this, if you are not a member of this community yet, get cracking. You need to go check it out. You see, you're going to meet a whole bunch of new people that you're going to say, hey, they're my besties, and you're going to become ardent followers, and then hopefully you'll be able to rub elbows and knowledge transfer, cross-pollinate ideas, nothing but good news during a time like this. Thank you. Thank Absolutely. You, yeah, you can sign up at fecinternational.org. Excellent.